somebody who's they'll try to interview people who have been unemployed for about five months so they can start them at the six months so they can get the tax credit but it's simply going to shift jobs away from people who are newly unemployed or long-term unemployed to people who have been unemployed for a specific period of time I think the most it's going to do is influence minimum wage because basically I said earlier that we should abolish the minimum wage what that four thousand dollar tax credit does is temporarily substantially reduce the minimum wage for six month period of time so I think on the margin you'll create some minimum wage type jobs on a temporary basis but it's not going to be any kind of great stimulus and as I said the deficits that we will generate the finance the tax cuts will destroy more jobs than those tax cuts create thank you mr. Kelly I now recognize mr. Kucinich thank you very much um, mr. Schiff you've made a very strong case about cutting government spending does that include the Pentagon and ending the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? It absolutely includes that. Okay. In fact, I, I would thank put that high on the agenda. I've I just <laughs> got a few. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to sort of pick up where uh, Mr. Kucinich uh, left off, and that is with regards to these economic theories and what works and what doesn't work. Um, Professor Taylor, if you wanted to finish up, and then we would maybe just move down the panel. Um, there seems to be disagreement, and I'd like to hear your perspectives as what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, I wanted to uh, point out, you know, Mr. Kucinich, unfortunately, he left, but uh, he made the point that uh, prior stimuluses uh, had enjoyed bipartisan support. Well, they didn't enjoy my support. I opposed them at the time. All of the efforts by government in the past to artif artificially stimulate the economy have failed. They have worsened the problem. You know, the recession is actually part of the cure. The recession needs to be allowed to run its course. The reason we're never going to have a real recovery is because the government won't let us have a real recession. We have serious economic imbalances that I mentioned. We have an economy that is based on spending borrowed money. That can't be. Economies have to be based on savings and investment and production. We're trying to run an economy upside down. And in order to maintain it, we have to keep interest rates at zero. We have to run these huge imbalances. We have to import all these goods that we don't produce. We have to borrow from the rest of the world. We have to allow the restructuring to take place. And still that happens. All, and still we allow that to happen. We're not going to create jobs. We're not going to have any real economic growth. We can't just keep repeating the mistakes. But I know and this is a political body, it is very difficult for politicians to level with the American public about how severe these problems are and how they are the consequence of years and years of mistakes made by Congress and by the Federal Reserve. There is a free market cure. It will work if the government gets out of the way and lets it happen. It's going to be painful, you know, just like anyone who has a drug habit. They check into rehab. They will come out better. But it's not going to work if every time they feel the withdrawal symptoms, they take another shot of heroin, because that's what these stimuluses are. It's a shot of monetary or fiscal heroin, and it's not going to work, and it only means that the eventual withdrawal is that much more painful, because we've got that much more drugs in the system that have to come out. Thank you very much. And I guess I'll, I'll ask a closing question because it's, it's rhetorical, but it's important, uh, I think, to the way I think, and, and perhaps your comments will help everyone. How many of you out of five believe Henry Ford did a service to America in automating and increasing the productivity at Ford plants uh, during his tenure in the Model T and Model A? He certainly did. One of the things we can all agree on. Isn't isn't that part of the challenge we face today is if you can produce a better product for less, which also includes less labor, that that's how you end up being a world-class creator of jobs. Isn't that the principle that for some reason stimulus simply adding jobs by paying for them does the exact opposite of less labor perhaps but world-class labor that produces a better product than yeah. the last. Mr. Schiff. Absolutely. In fact, to point out, you know, Henry Ford was famous for paying his workers $5 a day. Highest in the world at the time. Yeah, but that was an ounce and a quarter of gold, which at today's exchange rate is $2,500 a week. So Ford's workers were making $2,500 a week, the equivalent. They were paying no federal income taxes and no payroll taxes. There was no minimum wage and there were no unions. We paid the highest wages in the world, yet we produced the best quality, least expensive products. How was that possible? That was because we had the smallest government. We had minimal regulations, low taxes. And if we want to recreate American industry, we have to recreate that environment. We have to allow business.